I rather conclude that, the, that, that there is a linkage, although it's obviously not proven at, at the present time. We have eaten uh, somewhere in the region of three quarters of a million infected cattle. Fortunately, the vast, vast majority of those would be early stage incubation, but, but some, many thousands, uh, will have been near end stage um, incubation and therefore high infectivity. About two thirds of them were eaten before the Offal's ban came into effect. So we've, we as a population in this country have had a high dose of, of, of this infectious disease. Is British beef safe, do you think? Absolutely, it always has been. I have no doubt about that at all. Even throughout the, the, the worst of BSE, you would still insist that British beef was safe? I would be perfectly happy that British beef was safe. And it's rather important to me because I live in the country, my family live in the country, my grandchildren live in the country, and I have no concern about their health from beef itself. What is true is that historically, even before the disease was recognised, there would be some parts of cattle going into the food chain, particularly from the central nervous system, which could well have carried infectivity. But that's a very different thing than talking about the safety of beef. All the evidence is that the agents which cause these diseases do not appear in the muscle in any species. I'm a bit gloomy on the transmission of CJD of BSE to humans. Um, it seems to me that it's much better to be gloomy at this stage because um, very often in these health matters, although you can be too extreme, um, it is very dangerous to be complacent. For farmer Neil Manning, there are more pressing issues than the race to discover the link or otherwise between BSE and CJD. Like most British dairy and beef farmers, he's too many cows on his farm. As part of the government's measures against BSE, over half a million cows aged over 30 months have been culled since May. But the sheer volume has created a blockage in the system, and cows that are still destined to be slaughtered under the 30-month cull must remain on the farms. Cattle like these barren cows at the end of their productive lives as milkers. The problem is, of course, nationwide, everybody's got these barrens. Um, in a week or two, we'll start housing these cows, and we just about have got room, but they're going to be tight, and we don't want to look after our cattle like that. We want them, you know, we like plenty of space for our cattle. We don't want them uh, crammed in. Some farmers I know haven't got space, and after they haven't got the food when, when it comes to feeding them during the winter because they're all still eating a great deal. Um, as you can see, we're getting a little bit short of grass, and it's more mouths to feed. I just don't want the cattle here. They want to go. So when Douglas Hogg, the embattled British Minister of Agriculture, visited a dairy farm in Lancashire in the north of England, he could expect frustration from the farmers he met. A further BSE cull is what Europe wants, so these farmers are expecting more problems. There's just a tremendous backlog of, of animals waiting to go, and how on earth um, they're going to cope when they start this extra cull of all these cohorts. I Goodness think if it goes. That, is, that is not going to happen if it happens at all in the near yeah. future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've put that right back. Yeah. And I don't think you should expect to see any yeah. substantial yeah. Um, cull anyway yeah. in the near future. Yeah. No, well, that's a good thing. So you won't yeah. have to cope with that yeah. within the foreseeable future. Yeah. One very good reason there'll not be a new cull in the near future is that the system for disposing of dead cows is overloaded. The carcasses of the cows slaughtered in the over 30 month cull, the first and so far the only BSE inspired cull in Britain, are stained yellow and transported to one of Britain's licensed rendering plants. It's here rather than the abattoirs that the blockage is so acute. Nationwide up to 15,000 cows a week are currently being processed, putting a strain on the renderer's normal working capacity. To relieve the pressure, the Ministry of Agriculture plans to find additional cold stores for the cows that have already been slaughtered in the abattoirs. At least four grain warehouses are currently being converted to stockpile the carcasses that are waiting for rendering. But with nearly half a million cows lying idly on the farms, clearly these measures aren't enough. The choke point has been the renderers and by reducing the proportion of the carcass that has to be rendered and by taking on more coal storage facilities we can increase the throughput um, weekly we hoped up to around 55,000 and so we would hope to be able to clear the backlog by around Christmas 
That is our hope. But the whole cull issue has become a political battlefield where anti-European politicians in Britain's governing Conservative Party can and probably would defeat the extended cull policy in the House of Commons. They and a large number of their constituents believe the European Union is ignoring the scientific rationality of the BSE issue, instead threatening Britain's multi-billion pound beef industry for the benefit of its other member states. I think as time goes by, one finds a cause for concern as to what the cull is about. And if it's about appeasing Europe and not about scientific evidence and fact, then I would be very, very concerned about the implications of that, and I would take that into account in deciding how I voted. It's here at Oxford's Centre for the Epidemiology of Infectious Disease that the government found the scientific evidence it wanted and needed to hear to make a no-extended-cull policy sound reasonable. Professor Roy Anderson and his research team looked at the epidemiology of BSE in cattle. The peak of infection in the British herd was in 1992, when over 36,000 cows were found to be infected with BSE. Since then, the disease has been in steady decline. The research shows that the trend is inclined to continue downwards, with the British herd being clear of BSE by 2001, with the exception of a trickle of cases that will continue for an indeterminate time. But does Professor Anderson believe the results of his work justify the no extended cull policy? My own view is you should put the public health and safety issues first. And if you're convinced there should be, there is an association between BSE and the new CJD variant, then it would be desirable to take down the BSE epidemic as quickly as possible within given economic bounds. So what we did in our analysis, we created a scientific framework for the analysis and then analysed various options with different economic implications and epidemiological implications. And we listed the effect of each of these policies and I believe that's our role. It is government's role to decide which policy it wants to put in place. In response to Professor Anderson's study, the government told farmers and Europe that whilst cows over 30 months would continue to be removed from the human food chain and culled over a period of time, the extended cull agreed in Florence in June, which was to identify and slaughter immediately 147,000 cows over 30 months from herds where BSE had occurred, would not take place. So the government's interpretation of Professor Anderson's work is that a more effective cull which would reduce an unquantifiable BSE risk to the health of the British public would cost too much, many tens of millions of pounds more than the British government and a large percentage of Britain's people are prepared to pay. It appears that only when the risk is better understood will further action be taken. Better understanding the risk is on the agenda at the University of Wales. At this meeting, experts discuss the crisis, and amongst the speakers, Professor John Bryn Owen of the School of Agricultural Sciences. My thesis today is that we should give the highest priority to getting rid, eradicate um, BSE. We can't reject this human transfer, particularly because it looks like the same missions as in the BSE. It also it is quite significant that the French people have been able to transfer BSE to monkeys and they've got the same sort of lesions as in humans. So um, you may say that it hasn't been proved. It hasn't been proved directly. But a scientist, I think, seeing no other possibility at this stage would only reject that hypothesis at very great peril. Professor John Bryn Owen is not alone in believing that the British government has not encouraged enough scientific research to assess the risks of BSE to public health. I think where they have fallen down is that they haven't taken notice, uh, as far as we can see properly, of a wider base of advice. In fact, um, there has been really very little um, the count taken of some of the people who have rather contrary views and in fact in retrospect some of those views have been nearer the mark than the rather small and rather stable group of scientists that have been 
seemingly advising the government. Perhaps inevitably, the internet has become involved in the quest of those scientists ignored by government policymakers to further the understanding of the issues involved by communicating to whoever will listen. Behind this internet page is Dr. Stephen Dealer, a senior microbiologist who spent the last seven years searching for the truth about BSE. Dr. Dealer has taken on the role of being the never popular messenger of bad news. This is a fatal disease with no method of treatment, no method of diagnosis, passed from one species to another by eating infected food and it is not destroyed by cooking. You don't wait to see if humans start to die. You get ready with the research. And the scientists realise this. And I, I mean, I'm, for instance, all the research I've done, I've not, not got any funding for it at all. All the research done by various groups got no funding for a long time. And it was because they weren't doing the things that the Ministry of Agriculture wanted to find out, as far as I can see. I mean, that, that's the way, it, uh, the way it appeared. There's some relief in Britain that at last there's a live test for BSE and CJD. Although it will only identify the disease in late stages when the patient's brain has already been damaged, it will be useful in diagnosis and further understanding of the disease. But the test's been developed simultaneously in America and Germany. Although Britain has more to gain than any other country from these scientific developments, its research programs lag behind. Now another country offers its insights into BSE. In Iceland, scientists have been studying scrapie, the BSE-like disease in sheep. Scrapie's been known for about 200 years, and much of what we know about BSE derives from work on scrapie. 20 years ago, in a program to eradicate scrapie in Iceland, herds of infected sheep were culled, and the land restocked with uninfected sheep from areas known to be free of the disease. The sheep weren't fed any animal feed other than natural grass and hay yet they too became infected with scrapie. When restocking, even on farms that had been free of, uh, of sheep for three years, it tended to recur on some farms. And this uh, provoked the idea that uh, there might be some vector in the surrounding that keeps uh, infectivity around on the premises. And uh, one idea that this might be hay might. And there are some preliminary results that indicate that haemites may play a role, but uh, these are just very preliminary and, uh, and we are planning to follow them closer up. And there are some personal questions that these uh, results on the haemites arises, especially pertaining to the species barrier. Since scrapie is endemic, in sheep flocks in certain countries, such as Britain, that suggests there is some form, perhaps, of horizontal transmission. And the precise mode of that is uncertain at present, whether from studies in Iceland or studies from the UK. So that does leave the nagging doubt in your mind that there may be a component of horizontal transmission in BSE. The only argument I can put to you at the moment is we've searched desperately for it in the epidemiological data and in particular we've looked at the rapid phase of decay in this epidemic over the last five years, four years, and at present we can find no evidence from the experimental studies or evidence from the epidemiological database of its presence. That doesn't absolutely argue it's not there, it's just we can't detect it at present. The Lancet is one of the world's leading medical science journals. It's played a major role in reporting the significant developments in the research on BSE and CJD, including the findings from Iceland and the new live test on CJD in America. In a recent editorial, The Lancet launched a scathing attack on the way the government has handled the research into CJD and BSE. The UK government's policies have led to the sacrifice of thousands of healthy cattle, They've also threatened the belief that UK scientists can respond adequately to a new infectious risk. It's not that difficult to get government funding for something that has got um, the possibility of an immediate payback in votes. 
to be cynical about it. It's not that difficult to get uh, funding from pharmaceutical companies um, if the research you're doing is going to end up with a better pill which they can sell and make a profit out of. Um, when it comes to solving a very difficult, complicated problem like spongiform encephalopathies, BSE and CJD, um, there is no real goal-oriented um, thing about it at all. Um, the government was reluctant, presumably, to put money into a problem they couldn't see an easy solution to, um, couldn't see votes in. Um, and I think this is a tragedy. And we make sure yeah. we do. Professor Geoffrey Almond is a member of the government's spongy form encephalopathy advisory committee, SAIAC. A relatively recent recruit, he was one of three members who played a major part in the British government's announcement on March the 20th that there could be a link between BSE and the human equivalent CJD. Yes, there is a point that we could have done more in this area, we could have spent more money, but you can't just focus all your money in one area and let the rest of the science base go. You need to have people of the right calibre, and that means a proper funding for the science base generally. It's not just a message for, for our government, it's a message for governments all around the world. There has been, over the last sort of decade, a tightening in many countries on, on the amount of money spent on basic scientific uh, research. And I think you know, we're in a very scientific and technological age, and if we let that slip, the next generation of cures, of, of, of uh, technological advances and so on, will not be forthcoming, because they're all based on basic science. In his almost anonymous offices in the suburbs of London, the Assistant Chief Veterinary Officer at the Ministry of Agriculture has heard all the criticisms before, but his message to Europe remains simple and constant. We're not asking people to do anything other than to look at the scientific evidence without prejudice, to look at that evidence, to look at the control measures which have been put in place in the United Kingdom to look at the effect of those control measures in controlling the epidemic and to conclude as all the independent scientists working in the field in this country have done as has been supported by the scientific veterinary committee of the commission as has been supported by the world health organization that the measures which have been put in place to control the disease in animals to protect public health are both appropriate and adequate Back on the farms of Britain, the pressure is too much to endure. The extra mouths to feed, the lack of space to protect them during the winter, and all this on top of the collapsed cattle market. At least three farming suicides are linked to the BSE crisis. And the price of his other young stock has dropped. And the bank are threatening to, to withdraw the loan. To help others, farmers like yeah, Clifford Evans sure man rural helplines oh, for farmers and farm workers. Um, As the crisis yeah, worsens, more and more stress lines are opening up all over Britain. I'll try and get a stay of execution. It's the anger uh, and the frustration that they've had in having the accusations that they are responsible for some dreadful disease which is going to wipe out half mankind. And they cannot see that and they do not believe that that is the case. We've got to make sure that the scientists that are working on the programme are working flat out for the sake, really, of mankind. Not really on what suits a political end from some country or some government. Don't cover it up. The more we know, the more we need to know. For the people of Britain and the rest of Europe, the waiting goes on. Fearing the worst, hoping for the best. Ron McCullough for ORF Television, United Kingdom.